This is the Neki C35. This machine was loaned to me by my friends at Hunter's Quilt Mart. There's a lot I like about this machine. I like the contrasting controls. So, you know, you basically got a white machine, but where you have controls, they uh, tend to be of contrasting colors. They also have a few contrasting colors around. This is a part of a, the threading procedure. You go around this bar. Also down here is this black piece that when you are installing a bobbin, you kind of use this to get your thread ready to pull up. And I'll go into that later. I'll go into what all these dials and controls do. And I'll show you how to thread this machine, how to load a bobbin, how to use some of the different stitches. This machine will do straight stitch and zigzag and a lot of decorative stitches. This machine has some really nice decorative stitches in that the machine will actually use forward and reverse to get some of these patterns and so that's pretty cool this machine's got a needle threader there's also a buttonhole system on this machine that's kind of neat We'll look at all that stuff uh, a little more closely and in depth. This machine has a, a really nice basic layout. and laid out in a way that's logical and easy to understand. Another thing I really like is the instruction manual. It's really good. It's in depth and it even has some troubleshooting in it. It has kind of some basic how to sew instructions useful skills for instance it talks about each of the adjustments on the machine and tells you what they do it has really nice pictures it's written in clear english which you know it's <laughs> not always the case it just goes into great detail with words and pictures i've been going through this and it's nice this machine has a free arm you can do cuffs and circular items. This comes off and also they have all their accessories in here. There's a few feet, um, a seam jumper, uh, an extra thread pin. You can put it back. You've got a little more of a work surface here. Right here is the tensioner. They kind of highlight the four here. And I'll kind of go back and forth so you can see that there's a you know, a white background behind the four. And basically they're telling you that you start here. And then there's a white line on either side of that. And that's kind of letting you know that this is your normal range. So if you get outside of that, then, you know, maybe it's because you've got a unusually dense material, then that might explain why you need to get outside of the range or maybe something's a little uh, plugged up with some lint or something and needs to be changed you're probably going to be in this range here when everything's okay and normal sewing situations so if we see here in the book we've got thread tension it says the basic thread tension is number four they kind of show you the thread that goes to the needle and the thread that goes to the bobbin i like that then on this next one it shows when the thread tension is too loose it's getting pulled to the bottom and they're kind of showing what it looks like on the fabric and this is what it looks like when the top tension's too tight it just tells you if the tension's too loose you move to a higher number and when the tension's too tight you move to a lower number the higher the number, the higher the tension. Lower numbers are lower tension. That's easy. So this is the stitch width adjustment, but it also adjusts needle position. So if you're sewing a straight stitch right here, you can just barely see this oval with a point in it. And that's representing the, the slot and where the needle is. So here they're showing the needle is over to the left of the slot. And then here you can see they've got the same oval with the dot in the center and so that's the needle position in the center position so you can control the needle position while you're in a straight stitch and then if you're in a, any other of the stitches this is just your your stitch width adjustment so that would be a straight stitch and then at one you're starting to get a narrow zigzag medium and wide zigzag at six or wide decorative stitch and narrow decorative stitch. So when you're in straight stitch, 
it'll adjust the needle position. So normally you would want to sew here at zero and you keep your needle in the center. But when you're doing zippers and, and uh, maybe getting right on the edge of a fabric, you might want to put your needle over to the left. So here we have our stitch length adjustment. So the machine has all the stitches right on the front of the machine. So from here, here we're going to be in the top row of our stitches so when you're doing a straight stitch or zigzag or some of the basic decorative stitches you're going to be in this range also right here that's a graphical representation of a buttonhole when you're setting up the stitch length on your buttonhole you're going to be in this range. You'll need to dial it in. You won't know exactly where until you test your machine out, but this is the basic area you're going to be. Do some test buttonholes, get this dialed in, you know, maybe a little bit shorter to get the kind of a satin stitch you want, or maybe your threads are piling up too much and you need to make your stitch length just a little bit longer. Then if you're going to move into, let's say some more advanced decorative stitching, you'll move up to here to this this S1. So the machine has all the stitches right on the front of the machine. The way that they're listed here is instructive in how to set the machine up to accomplish the stitch that you choose off of this list. These are laid out in rows so you can see your S1 and your S2 here that we saw on the stitch link adjustment dial. Those are down here. So if you're going to sew anything on this top row, you're going to be in this range here from 0 to 4. So if you're going to do the buttonhole. You'll set this up to buttonhole and then you'll also be in the buttonhole range of the stitch length. So as long as you're in this range, whatever you pick on this dial is, is indicated here. If you want to do the scalloped stitch, you're going you're gonna to put this on K. And then when you're done with the scalloped and you want to do a straight stitch, you just go back to A. Now if you want to sew anything in the second row here, the S1 row, you're going to set this to S1. And when you put this on D, you're going to sew that stitch right there. Same with S2. When you're in S2, instead of sewing that D, you're going to be sewing this D. That's how you select. So you need to use a combination of these two dials to get some of these stitches. You've got your your back tack. So that's how you reverse. Here on the back of the machine there is a control to lower the feed dogs. So if you want to do some manual embroidery you can use a hoop and move the material through by hand you'll want to put the feed dogs down so this disengages the feed dogs so they won't engage the fabric and then when you're ready to, to use the feed dogs just to do normal sewing again you go back to up. This is the hand wheel. Here's where it plugs in and this is your power switch. So step one of filling the bobbins right here. Gives you a little picture there. Come around this device here. A full turn. Put a thread through your bobbin like this. And engage. When you engage the bobbin, it disengages the machine. So the machine is not going to sew while this is filling. If I just pull that over, this cover comes off. You can refer to that anytime you want. Kind of gives you an arrow what you go around. So let's look at that in real life. You want your thread coming off like this and drop that in there. Then you just come around this piece here and then you go around this black piece. And then the thread cuts off. There's a thread cutter there. Put that back on. And now you're ready to pull your thread up. So if we're going to sew with this machine, we need to get it threaded. We'll just follow the numbers that start here at 1. So we come to that guide and then around number 2 here. And then right here is a 3. And the bottom is 4. And right here is a 5. So there's a 3, a 4, and a 5. It's 1, 2, 3, around that's 4. 
and around that's five. Six and seven through these two guides and then you thread the needle front to back. So our guides are here. So to get that guide, you kind of got to come in at this angle like that. To thread the needle, you'll want to raise it to its highest position. Or you can just look at this line on the hand wheel and line it up to the machine. Once you get the needle in the right position, using the line on the hand wheel, you bring down the threader and you bring it forward. And there's two hooks. Pull the thread under those hooks and then just kind of move the, the threader back and then you let go and it's got that little loop there ready to Okay, so let's just start out with, we're going to set this on four. I got width on zero, stitch length to two and a half and I'm going to start with a straight stitch. Back tack. That's actually a pretty long stitch length, which is good. Let's, uh, let's just try a zigzag, and let's go a full width zigzag. And then this machine's got a thread cutter right there. So let's just try to get this dialed in to more of a... I'm going to just put this down in the buttonhole range and we're going to start to get a more decorative zigzag. Sometimes I'll adjust on the fly. We'll go to S1 and oh, I don't know, let's try... E. This fabric is going back and forth, so forward and reverse. So this machine can do forward and reverse in order to accomplish its stitch. So that's pretty neat. So I don't know, what's that? Star Trek? So you can see the machine's got a lot of built-in capabilities. One of the things that looks kind of neat on this machine is a buttonhole. So to accomplish the one step buttonhole you use this foot. It's going to attach to the machine. This is kind of the foot. That bar is where it attaches to the machine. And then here you have a place where you put whatever button you're going to use on your let's say shirt. You just put your button that you're going to use into this foot and you close this down. And so that's how you transfer the appropriate size to the machine. So when you clamp this button in, there's a stop on here, and this stop moves with wherever the button is clamped into the button foot. So I'll take the foot off, take that foot off, put this one on. Get that thread through the foot. I'm just gonna do it out here in the middle just to kind of see how it goes. So we wanna be in this range up here, and then we need to be in that buttonhole area that is indicated on the stitch length. Now we can mess around with the width, depending on how wide we want our stitches on the buttonhole. It says to put it in the five to six range. We're gonna set this on buttonhole. We pull down the, it's a buttonhole lever and it's been pushed to the back because this button is in here this little tab right here is going to touch into this lever and tell the machine to turn around and go the other way so yeah that's pretty neat you just trim your threads and then you're going to cut a hole right in there. Get our button out here and see. So yeah, that looks like the right size buttonhole for that button. Let's just do it again. We'll just see if we can make these, these zigzags on the side. Just bring them a little closer. I mean, that's good right there, but maybe you want them closer. So I did manage to make a tighter sides, but I think I needed to put that lever all the way back up and then pull it back down in order to restart the buttonhole. So let me try it one more time. I'm gonna put this up and then pull it down and push it back. And I think that's gonna reset the machine so that that first tack lands. 
That's a good looking buttonhole. It's what they call a one step buttonhole. Now, changing feet is real simple. There's a the lever right here, and I just pull it up, and the foot basically falls off. Now, this foot has a little bar in it. I'm going to lower that down onto the bar of the foot so it lines up with that slot, and it's installed. You <laughs> can just lower it down on there. That's that's on there, and when you want to take it off, you just pull that lever up. It just falls off. Really easy. And now it's on. Changing a foot out couldn't be any easier than that. There's a lot of lines here for reference. Millimeters in here, 10 and 20, of course, divisions in between. And then up on the top end, you've got fractions of an inch and one inch, inch and a quarter right over here. So the Necky C35, it is just a really simple machine to operate. Everything is clearly laid out in a real logical fashion. I, I really like how everything's laid out on this machine. You've got a lot of decorative stitches. You can do buttonholes. You can do, you can do a three-step zigzag. You can do a blind stitch. I want to thank Hunter's Quilt Mart for lending me this machine. I'll leave a link to their website down in the description. Real nice folks, go check them out. Thanks a lot for watching my channel. Your button in here and <laughs> uh, you just kind of uh... <laughs> well, <laughs> wow. <laughs> like a watermelon seed. This works, I promise. I've tried it.